I feel like the key to believing anything strange, at least if you're lucky enough, is to get a chance to see it. And so I know that a lot of people find the complex numbers strange and they want to live their lives without them. But what we can do here in showing you what the roots of unity are is to realize that there's a picture we can draw for the complex numbers. So let's start with drawing the numbers that we already know how to draw. Everyone who's made it through grade school at this point in history has a picture like this in their mind for the so-called real numbers. That doesn't make them real, but we can draw a picture. And the convincingness of that picture is why everyone's sort of down with the real numbers, despite uh, some really tricky things when you start asking hard questions. So zero's on there, one's there, minus one's over there, no big deal. And it turns out that the, the real trick with complex numbers and the way to get the most out of them is to see that you can draw a picture of them too. And this is called the Argand diagram, and maybe in a later video we'll get into the history of the complex numbers. We'll get into where they come from and how they came to be. And what you do is you take this horizontal line and you give it a little bit of vertical. You make a new axis that goes straight up and down, and this is an axis that's defined instead of by multiples of 1, by multiples of i. And then what the complex numbers are, all the numbers in that plane. The complex numbers, instead of making a line, make a plane. And that two-dimensional nature ends up being very important. And the algebraic use we, came, we used before about i, being able to square it, and we can also add it and add it to other things and subtract and divide and all those things, actually ends up working perfectly with the geometry of this plane in a way that's like kind of creepy sometimes. So, let's get used to using this drawing. Uh, the most common thing that people do, okay, when people think about complex numbers, they think about a point in the plane, but then more than that, they think about a horizontal component that's a real number, and a vertical component that's an imaginary number. And that goes well with our idea that we sort of put the reals and a multiple of the reals together, so this is x, and this is a y, or i, y, if you want to think about not how long the line is, but where it is in the complex plane. And so this is a, a very simple way to think about things. Um, we spend a lot of time when we're doing uh, Cartesian coordinates, when we're working with planes in other contexts, breaking them down in terms of these horizontal and vertical components. And there's a whole bunch of familiar baggage that comes along with the complex numbers there too. So for instance, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find out how long that line is. Um, we can subtract and add things using their components. And it's generally, I don't know, a pretty simple sort of thing. And the addition and the subtraction of points goes together with what you would do component by component. So for instance, like 2 plus 3i, that's a complex number and a point in the plane and we would add it to 1 plus 2i, which is another point in the plane. And then to add these together, we add the horizontal components and we add the vertical components. And that's what we get. But the real magic starts happening when we start doing multiplication and division. And when we do multiplication and division, we can do it algebraically with these coordinates and everything but it makes it a little bit harder to see the, the fantastic thing that's going on with the geometry there. Um, if we want to be able to see that magic more easily, it helps to have another way to think about these points in the plane. So, and maybe that's, that's sort of an important thing to remember too, is that x plus i, y isn't necessarily the definition or sort of the ground truth of the complex numbers. That's one way to think about points in this plane. It's one way to break it down using vertical and horizontal. But there are other ways to break it down. And the, the important way to break the plane down that will help us see the, the geometric nature of multiplication and division and ultimately get back to the question about roots of unity is angle. So how far up this horizon this point is, and distance, how far away it is from this common zero point called the origin. Let's take a look 
at that distance and angle conception of the complex numbers. Um, and I'm not going to give it coordinates because, again, I, I want to show that we don't have to go through horizontal and vertical coordinates to think about these things. So this point can be uniquely defined from two parameters that become evident from that line. So everything is measured off of this horizontal line here, and this is an angle. Now, if you read a book on complex numbers, they'll often use the angle, uh, the symbol theta for an angle. They'll also call it the argument. Sometimes they'll call it the modulus. And I think these words kind of get in the way. Um, the word angle is pretty serviceable, so I would recommend using it. The other thing here, and the Pythagorean theorem gives us this if we want to calculate it, is how far away the point is along that line. Um, we can call this distance, but the more common word is magnitude. If we want to talk about the magnitude of z, the notation we use is the same as for absolute value. And if we want to talk about the angle of z, there's a lot of different notations, but I feel this angle symbol is something that's pretty familiar to folks. Any point that we pick on this plane is going to have a specific distance away from the origin combined with a specific direction in which you're pointing from the origin. And these, these angles are measured in radians, and so all the way around the circle is 2 pi, and they're, when I say they're unique, they're not quite unique. They're unique enough as long as you got your head on your shoulders is the thing about it. So this angle right here is the same. And if I measured it, it's like, I don't know, pi over 6 or something like that, 30 degree angle. It's the same angle as if you go all the way around the circle plus a little bit, or if you go around the circle backwards most of the way. As numbers, the angles aren't exactly unique, but as long as you're paying attention to a whole circle being 2 pi, it's in most contexts really not too confusing to think about those as equivalent angles. Okay, so that's how to think about complex numbers, points in a plane, in terms of this, this radius or this magnitude and an angle. But, like I said, the real trick comes when the geometry of the situation works out perfectly well with the arithmetic or the algebra of the situation. So it turns out that if you take two numbers, uh, let's say z and w are in the complex plane, and that's the fancy letter we use for the complex plane. It's a, a c that's been bolded in a way that you can see it on the blackboard. If I multiply z and w and I take the magnitude, if I ask how far away is that point when I multiply those two points together, it's just as far away as if I take the magnitude of z and the magnitude of w and multiply them both together. So when you multiply points, you multiply their magnitudes. And then if I ask what's the angle of the product zw, it's going to be the angle of z plus the angle of w. Now we can prove that these are true using the coordinates or whatever else we want to prove. There's you know, a few different ways to go through all of this. Uh, and maybe we'll do that in a later video. For right now, I just want you to know that these facts are true. That this algebra or arithmetic of multiplying ends up having geometric consequences. So when you multiply points together, their distance multiplies and their angles add. And that's really all we need to find the roots of unity.